through the rest of this. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start uh, down on this second row here. Our special characteristics, the, the piece that we were working with on the board over there, is that this is actually half of... half of an equilateral triangle, which is how we know that this short side on the bottom, so it's short, medium, and hypotenuse. So we have a short leg, we have a medium leg, and then we have the hypotenuse, which is the long side. The hypotenuse is going to be twice as long as the short side. That's how we got that, is because that's only half of a side of an equilateral triangle on the bottom. So the number between here and here is half. So we're going to pick a number that I can easily divide by 2. Like we'll say the number uh, 6, right? So that's the one we had up on the board. So 6. So half of 6 is 3. And the question is, what is this? Okay? And you don't need a calculator because I'll do all of the calculator work for you. Uh, but would this be an add Pythagorean theorem or a subtract Pythagorean theorem? subtract and how do we know that it's because we're trying to find we have the hypotenuse so this would be 3 squared plus x squared equals 6 squared so in order to solve this for x I would have to subtract that 3 squared from both sides so that's why it's a subtraction if you don't remember that it's been a little bit since we did that okay so what we're going to do to find x is in my calculator I'm going to go 6 squared minus 3 squared. Now, if you had a calculator in front of you, you would probably just do that, right? You wouldn't have to write that all out. So I'm going to do that in the calculator. So 6 squared minus 3 squared. Okay? Get a number. So the number I got was 27. So here I got x equals... Okay, because you're going to square root both sides. So I have x equals the square root of 27. What perfect square is inside of 27? 9, 9 and 3, right? So we have square root of 9, square root of 3, which becomes 3, radical 3. So this side here is 3 times radical 3. So looking at this one, we're kind of, yesterday we looked at the pattern and we saw. 10, 10, and 10 radical 2. So it was very clear that it was going to be that same number with a radical 2. So on this one, you might see a pattern, but it might still be confusing because like, these numbers are the same. So are these two numbers always going to be the same? We don't know. So let's find out. So let's pick another number that's even that we can divide easily. So let's pick 10. So if that side is 10, what's the short side going to be? 5. Okay. Okay. And to find the third side here, we're going to subtract, right? So we'll go 10 squared minus 5 squared. Okay, so we've got 10 squared minus 5 squared, and that'll equal our x squared, or question mark over here. So that's 100 minus 25. So that's the square root of 75. What perfect square is inside of 75? 25. So 25 and 3, right? So square root 25, square root 3, which is 5, square root 3. Now looking at this second example, are you a little bit clearer as to what the shortcut is going to be? <laughs> okay. So on that one, it was a little bit deceiving because the two numbers were the same. But here we can kind of see that whatever our short side is, right, we're going to take that same number and we're going to multiply it times radical 3. So we kind of already figured out, right, that if this side, let's use a different number, let's use 18, okay? If that side is 18, we kind of already figured out that the bottom side is going to be 9, right? It's going to be half, okay? Got that, 9, and now we can kind of confidently say that I know that if that one's 9 on the bottom there, then this medium leg is going to be 9 radical 3. And that is 9 times radical 3. And I'm going to be very specific about the fact that that is times radical 3. Because it is very simple, again, when that's a 9, to know that that's 9 radical 3. 
But what if instead of 9, it was radical 20? What would I do? Well, you would multiply by radical 3, so that's why that's there. Okay, Okay. so up here I'm going to write the rule, and we're going to talk specifically about the placement of these three things. Okay, So the rule here, we said that we have this short side x. Okay, The shortest side, the smallest number, is across from which angle that we're dealing with? 30. The 30. Does that make sense that the smallest side is across from the smallest angle? Right? We talked about that already. So that's an important piece here, that this x is the one that's across from the 30 degrees. Okay, so that is our x, that's our starting point. You have to find that number, and once you find that number, the other two numbers are a lot easier to figure out. Okay? Okay, so then the hypotenuse, this is the other one that's pretty straightforward. The hypotenuse is going to be double that, so twice as big. And visually, it should look like that number is big, bigger than, right? So you've got 9, you've got 9 radical 3, and then 18. 18 is the biggest of those three numbers, so it should go with the hypotenuse across from the 90. Okay? And then across from the 60, okay, that is where you're going to have your x multiplied by radical 3. Okay. So just like we did yesterday, we're going to start with the straightforward type where we're dealing, we have the smaller side and we're working with the other two. So type 1, okay, for this type is if you are given the short side. So if you are given the shortest side, this is the easiest of the three types of problems that you'll come across to do. Okay? So if this is 31, you have two pieces right here. One of them is 31 times 2, and one of them is 31 times radical 3. But which one is which? Okay, so across from the 90, the hypotenuse, that is our 31 times 2. So that's going to be 62. And our medium leg is going to be our 31 times radical 3. Now, there's nothing I actually have to do with that, so I'm done. There you go. So there's your two sides. So we've got a 62, and we've got a 31 radical 3. That's the easy type, right? Okay. So right below it is another one that's just like that. So I'll pause for a minute. Do you know what x is? Do you know what y is? Right down here. What's that? Mm -hmm. So we'll times by 2 to get to the hypotenuse. And if you're not sure, like if that's kind of like, I'm not really sure which one is which, continue past this 90 and make it into a full equilateral triangle. That might help you as well to see that this would be 5, this side would be 10, so this side is also 10. Because remember, it is half of an equilateral triangle. So that should maybe kind of help you find which one's the hypotenuse if you're not sure. So if that one is the times 2, then this one is the times radical 3. Okay, so y should be 10, and x should be 5 radical 3. So that's the easiest type. So we take the short side times 2 to get the hypotenuse. You take the short side times radical 3 to get the, the medium side or the medium leg. Okay, so not the hypotenuse. Okay, so we're going to keep that in mind as we work through these other two. So the second one that we're going to work with is if you're given the hypotenuse, because dividing by 2 is not something that's super difficult. So we're going to do that one first, So and before we get to the little bit more complicated one. So type 2 is going to be if we're given the hypotenuse.
And I'm going to put right up here, right next to this type 2, if you're given the hypotenuse, what is the one thing you have to find first? You have to go back to that short side first. Okay? So if you're looking at a hypotenuse number, you've got to divide by 2 first. You've got to do that piece first to get the short side. Okay? You can't go from the hypotenuse to the medium side. You could, but it would be very difficult. Okay, so let's get down to the short side first. So we are going to find the short side. And yesterday, kind of when we did this, we kind of set this up as like a little equation. So if that helped you yesterday, you might want to do that today as well. So 32 is equal to our double x. So if you're not really sure, like, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to add, subtract, multiply, divide? You set it up as a mini equation that can help you try to figure out what you're supposed to do with that 32. Okay, so we'll take 32 divided by 2, which is 16. And then after you get your 16, you're going to, again, take the short side times radical 3, and that'll give you the medium leg. So this little piece down here, we take the short side, which we just found to be 16, times radical 3. That gives you the medium one. Still not so bad. What if the number can't be divided by 2 evenly? Here's one rule of thumb. You're not allowed to put fractions and radicals together, or decimals and radicals together. Okay, just like you're not allowed to put decimals inside of fractions. Okay, so when you do something that cannot be evenly divided by 2, you have to leave it as a fraction. Okay, so right here, I'm just going put to a, put a note. If the number does not divide evenly, you need to leave it as a fraction. Okay. So what we're doing is we're taking 15 divided by 2. Well, that would be 7.5. Nope. Leave it as 15 over 2. So then the question on this one is, is I know that the next part right here is going to be 15 over 2 radical 3. I know there's going to be radical 3 with it, but where does the radical 3 go? Okay, so anytime you're putting a number or an x or a radical with a fraction, it's always going to be added to the top. You could put it kind of just behind it, but it usually isn't going to look like that. So when we multiply this times radical 3, to move over to the medium leg, it's going to look like this, 15 radical 3 over 2. So adding that radical on for that medium leg, that radical is going to go up on the top with whatever number is up there. Okay? And then the third type, the third option. Okay? How do I take 22 radical 3 and divide that by 2? Well, we've been doing a lot of radical work. Okay, so when we take this 22 root 3 and we divide that by 2, what do I do with the radical 3? Nothing, right? The 22 and the 2 get divided, but nothing happens to the radical 3. So for my short side down here, I have 11 root 3. That's my short side. So if that one has the radical 3 on it, then that must mean that this side is 11. Hang on. I have the short side. How do I get to the medium side? You take your short side times <coughs> radical 3. So stick to those rules, especially the first time you're going through this. Just because you see a radical doesn't mean that this next part will not have a radical. Okay, so make sure you stick to the rules. So you take your 11 radical 3 and you multiply it times radical 3. Okay. So I'm going to write this out. I have 11 times, have you gotten to this point yet? What's radical 3 times radical 3? Three? 3, which is radical 9, but what's radical 9? 3. 
So 11 times 3 is 33. Common misconception that I want to point out. Here are my three sides. I have 22 radical 3, I have 11 radical 3, and I have 33. So we talked about the short sides should look like the smallest number, right? And hypotenuse should look like the biggest number. So the common misconception is, wait a minute, 22 is smaller than 33. But it's not 22. It's 22 radical 3. And what is 22 radical 3? It's 38. It's not 22. It's 38. So is 38 the biggest number I have? Yeah, so it should be the hypotenuse. So I know that that doesn't necessarily always um, make sense in your brain because you're looking at the number 22, but that radical 3 that you're multiplying times the 22 does make that your biggest number. Okay, so be careful about that. So the third type is the most confusing. It's the most um, mentally consuming type. And this is if you're given that middle leg, that medium leg. Okay, so given the medium leg... immediately you should go to finding the short side. If you don't have the short side, you need the short side. Okay, if you don't have it, you need it, go find it. Okay, how do I know that this is the medium leg? What's it across from? The 60. So my short side, remember, is, against, is across from the 30. So this is my short side, that's my X. This is my medium side, so this is my x radical 3. That's my x radical 3 side. How do I solve for x? Well, remember, that is x times radical 3. So the opposite of times is divide. So this is why we did all of that division work for the radicals again. So I'm going to divide both sides by radical 3. And you might have seen that ahead of time. Okay, I got this. It's 4. This one's pretty straightforward. So the radical 3 was there where it's supposed to be. So my x is going to be just 4. So the radicals cancel out and my x is 4. So that's going to be my short side. So that helps me get this to be 4. And then my hypotenuse is just taking that short side times 2. And we wrote that rule down here at the bottom. The short side times 2 is how you're going to get your hypotenuse. So we've got 8 and 4. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward when there's a radical where that radical is supposed to be. Go ahead. Can you just see that it's 4? Yeah. For that one, yeah. Yeah, okay. sure. If it's where it's supposed to be, it's pretty straightforward. But what if there's not a radical there? So that's this next 2, okay? So again, this is your medium side. This is the side that is supposed to be your x radical 3. So on this one, do you see the radicals that are going to cancel out on both sides? No, not like we did on the last one. So on the last one, yeah, it's pretty straightforward that the answer was going to be 4. But here, when we divide both sides by radical 3, it's going to take us a little bit of work. Okay, so it is going to cancel out on this side. But now we're back to that rationalizing the denominator business that we had before. So 24 divided by radical 3. Okay, so hopefully we've kind of done this a little bit now that you might feel a little comfortable with it. So across the top, pretty straightforward, there's 24 radical 3. And then what's the bottom? Just three. So, when NC simplifies, then, is that yes. Okay, so the difference between, so there's one more down here that we're going to try in just a minute. So the difference between the one below and the one here is this 24 and the 3 on the bottom can be simplified, so you should simplify it. What if I can't simplify it? Then you don't simplify it, okay? So here, this 24 radical 3 over 3 is going to become 
8, right? Because 24 divided by 3 is 8. So then which side is that? Did I just find x or y? Do you know? I just found y. I just found the short side. The short side is 8 radical 3. So 16, yeah, so times this by 2. When you times by 2, is that going to make the 3 into a 6? No, it's just going to affect the number on the outside. So that 8 is going to become 16 radical 3. So we're going to take that 8 radical 3. We'll multiply that times 2 to get my hypotenuse. Okay. And I'll roll through this last one a little bit faster because we kind of just did it. But the difference is on this last one, um, is how you get your final answer for the hypotenuse. That's the tricky part. That's the one that's a little bit different and that you might have questions about. So this 8, that is still your x radical 3 side. This is still x radical 3, so I need to divide. So if I pull that out down here, 8 divided by radical 3, we do this business, rationalize that denominator, get a whole number as my denominator instead of a radical, so you're left with 8 radical 3 over 3. And we just had that on this last one, 24 radical 3 over 3. And then we said, can we reduce? So 8 and 3 cannot be reduced. So what do you do? Mm -hmm. Nothing. You leave it. So this y side is 8 radical 3 over 3. Now we have to take that times 2. So I said, anytime you have a fraction, especially if you're multiplying, where does that extra thing go? It goes on the top. So really, what is the only thing that's going to change when I multiply it times 2? The only number that's going to change is the 8 in the front. So when you multiply by 2, you are multiplying... 8 radical 3 over 3 times 2 over 1, right? So the only thing that changes is the 8. So it's going to become 16 radical 3 over 3 on my hypotenuse. Go ahead. So it's the same every time, uh, just different... Different givens, right? Because if you look at the one above it, it's the exact same answer except over 3 because 24 times is 3 times bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so what happens is you have, you have three different types, right? And each type is going to give you the same answer, the same type of answer. It's just you might have to reduce at the end or not. But do you want to memorize every type? Uh, it's up to you. So the different types, really the part that you need to know is you need to know, if you're given the short side, you need to know times 2 for the hypotenuse, times 2 for the radical. And if you're not given the short side, you need to know how to find the short side. Okay? Okay. Let's do some practice.